Jewish that were held hostage to the settlers. Because I think the vast majority of Israelis don't, don't care about the, the occupied territories. But were held hostage to the settlers that have enough political power within the Israeli political system that they can frustrate any attempt to get them out. And as long as they're there, the Palestinians can't possibly make peace. There are two kinds of settlers, basically. There are the ideological settlers who, uh, who feel that uh, these territories are, uh, have been promised to the Jewish people by God, and they feel that every place which is mentioned in the Bible, they have the, not only the right, but the sacred duty to come and to, to build their, a modern Jewish settlement. And if Palestinians who live on that spot uh, have other ideas, then they have the right to, to break their resistance by force or to call in the army. And the other kind, which are the more um, uh, majority of the settlers, are in fact ordinary Israelis who came there simply because the government was offering them very cheap housing. When you go to live there, then most of the money you get is a government loan, and if you stay there for 10 years, then you don't have to pay back the loan. <laughs> Well, I think the unpleasant and unavoidable comparison is with South Africa during the apartheid period. And I must say that having visited South Africa, that they were uh, much better off than the Palestinians living in the refugee camps. to jail because it was impossible to sit still while the obscenity of the apartheid system was being imposed on our people. The United States is seen quite correctly as being the sole supporter of Israel and that Israel would not be able to do what it's doing without American green light. The U.S.-Israeli relationship is really unique on Capitol Hill. In my 22 years that I served there, there was never a moment when there was really a debate about U.S. policy in the Middle East. It was always, what does Israel want, and almost always, Congress gave them exactly what they wanted without any debate, without any amendments being considered. This type of policy exists for, as a result of a number of factors. First of all, there is the lobby, the U.S. lobby for Israel, APAC, American Israeli uh, Public Affairs Committee. It has a multi-million dollar budget. It has a highly professional group of people working on Capitol Hill. They know the legislative process, they know the personalities, and uh, therefore advance what's best for the state of Israel. Congress seems to think that if you oppose what Israel wants, you'll be defeated in the next election. Another factor is the fundamentalist Christian community. Fundamentalists are often 
represented by the televangelists that are on TV. They believe that uh, a strong Israel is a part of God's plan. They believe that uh, the day will come when a battle will occur in the plain of Armageddon in the Middle East. There will be the forces of truth and righteousness on one side, force of evil on the other side. And in that struggle, the Christian forces led by the second coming of Jesus Christ will prevail. All of the Jews will be either destroyed or converted instantly to Christianity. It may sound to the, to the viewer as a very uh, far out notion, but believe me, it is widely held and supported by millions of Americans whose doctrines really in the ultimate are hostile to the survival of Jews, but nevertheless, the supporters of Israel see this vast body of American people as being a great asset at this time. So they embrace them. And Mr. Robertson who said, I had a vision from God that we have to support Israel. And no matter what happens and what they do, this is the will of God because they're God's chosen people. A couple of weeks later, he added, and that's when this ministry started really being blessed, when we made that commitment to Israel. Not the commitment to God or Jesus Christ's teachings, but to Israel. And we have come from all the nations of the earth to say to the people of Israel, we are your friends, we are with you, and we believe that you are called by God to possess this land. I, as a Christian and a Christian pastor, object not in my name and not in the name of over 115 to 120 million Christians do you dare say that we support injustice and deceit. We do not. The citizenry of this democratic society is systematically deprived of access to the real facts. The American media play a major role in continuing U.S. support for Israel through leaving out vast swaths of information. It is the classic case of lying through omission. Major statements by American diplomats, senators, military leaders are going unreported. Sentences are being removed from news stories. Information is being manipulated. Those are the three factors that work together on Capitol Hill and lead to such total bias, such total absence of free speech, of open debate, that is, I think, very destructive to our institutions and to our best interests in world affairs. So Israel, for example, does not abide at all by international law. The entire occupation is illegal. It's a violation in particular of the Fourth Geneva Convention.